Hello, my name is Jim Zomlin. I'm the executive director of the Linux Foundation, and I am super happy to be here at today's event. Uh, and today I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, the importance of open source in the age of artificial intelligence. You know, 2025 has been kind of a, an insane year uh, as it comes to uh, artificial intelligence and open source. It wasn't too long ago, uh, just in February of 2025, about seven, eight months ago, where DeepSeek seemingly came out of nowhere and dropped uh, an open model that was nearly as performant as some of the most cutting edge frontier models from uh, both OpenAI and Anthropic. This sort of threw the entire uh, open uh, source and AI industry into uh, a bit of a frenzy. And uh, when that happened, NVIDIA's stock dropped 17% uh, because people started to wonder if the economics of artificial intelligence were sustainable when there were freely available open models uh, coming out of places like DeepSeek. And when we look back at that time, it was surprising that uh, DeepSeek was able to produce such an incredible model at such a low cost. But if you had purchased NVIDIA stock back then uh, and held it until now, you would have doubled your money. Uh, in fact, the industry has recovered so much since then that today, instead of talking about open source commoditizing the artificial intelligence sector, we're talking about whether or not there's an AI bubble or overinvestment in artificial intelligence uh, in uh, as recently as October and even today. So in roughly six months, we went from open source will commoditize NVIDIA to we're in an AI bubble. So what is really going on here and why is open source so important in the context of artificial intelligence? Well, first, a bubble is by definition where the supply of a particular technology, product or service is too large relative to the demand for that product. In other words, people are investing too much in a technology that won't end up having demand and everyone's gonna end up losing their money. This happened back in the dot-com bubble in the late 90s uh, and people have similar concerns given how much money is being invested in artificial intelligence today. However, artificial intelligence is a bit of a different market. You see, AI isn't just a tool which is typically the kind of technology product people produce, AI is something that actually uses tools to accomplish tasks on behalf of people. It's also used to create robotics, to advance medical discovery, and so forth. In other words, in the demand for intelligence is essentially limitless. And the competition for training high-performant frontier models is intense. The move from open models to inference uh, is creating even more demand for AI infrastructure. And all of this is requiring more energy, which is causing energy and power and electricity costs to rise. You see, the competition here, because demand is so high, is incredibly intense. At the frontier model level, people like to think of the amount of investment going on here as essentially the sport of kings. And it's really eye-popping amounts of capital that are being invested into these frontier models. Sam Altman recently alluded to the fact that GPT-5 cost over a billion dollars for its training run. Anthropic recently bought a gigawatt worth of Tensor Protocol units, TPUs from Google, worth billions of dollars. XAI is building out a 200,000 GPU data center infrastructure. Competing at the infrastructure layer for frontier model development is a game that only a few organizations in the world can do, and very few at that. 
And this is why open source models are so important. In addition for the amount of investment to compete at the frontier model era, demand for inference is also exploding. Inference is essentially what happens when models think longer. And you, you can see here just with Google as that the demand for inference has gone up over 50%, 50 times in a year. That is an incredible increase in the demand for the amount of computing power that is needed for all of this inference and all of this token generation that's happening. Because thinking more means more tokens, and tokens require more data center infrastructure and more energy. In fact, it's not even the CP GPUs that are becoming the constraint on AI. Today, Bagel's biggest single constraint to AI growth is energy production. Recently, Amazon's CEO reported in their earnings call that this is the number one impediment for them meeting the demand for artificial intelligence. And so this so-called AI bubble is primarily an infrastructure story where capital-intensive Data center technology and power generation is being invested in order to meet this incredibly large scale, almost endless demand for AI. And yet, one of the companies at the center of this demand, NVIDIA, continues to promote and is the, one of the top contributors for open source models and AI technology in the world. So. Why is open source so important in this context? Well, currently, most of the hype and all of the talk about AI investment is really focused at the bottom of the stack, at energy production and building AI data centers and GPU uh, sort of factories in order to meet this demand to the tune of billions and billions of dollars of investment. But there's much more than just a data center and energy production involved in AI. There's the software infrastructure that's used to deploy and build models. And all of that is used to create applications, things like ChatGPT or AI agents, applications where value is really created and captured in the AI ecosystem. And this is where open source plays an important role. You see, the current constraint in AI is really the physical build out of data center technology and energy in order to fuel this AI revolution. But eventually, it's really the software that is where applications get built and deployed. And where open source really is effective is at the infrastructure and model layer allowing people who are building AI applications to get the most out of that scarce resource at the bottom of the stack in terms of the price per token per kilowatt. So let's talk a little bit about where open models fit into this story. Today, open models have really commoditized training particularly models out of China like DeepSeek, Quen, or uh, open models like Llama or Mistral in the West have allowed for a huge amount of diffusion of open AI models. Those models can be distilled, trained, and fine-tuned smaller models that have better efficiency and uh, better focus in singular areas uh, and can sort of build upon each other in order to create essentially a 90-90 rule. Models that are about 90% as effective as the frontier models from proprietary vendors such as OpenAI and Anthropic, but also 90% cheaper uh, to build and deploy. So essentially, this turns massive research models into usable public infrastructure. Open source has largely caught up with closed models in performance. Really what we're seeing now is about a three to six month lag between the proprietary expensive to produce 
frontier models and the open models that are much more accessible and significantly lower cost. Today in the open model arena, we're really entering an era of performance and efficiency where the true measure of the of the value of a particular model isn't just how well it performs, but it's how efficiently it performs as well. And this is where open source is particularly good. Whether it's GPT, OSS, DeepSeek, Quen, or others, these all have that sort of magic low cost per token per kilowatt that's the sweet spot for adoption. All around the world, startups and others are leveraging these open models to get the most out of their very scarce uh, hardware and power infrastructure. So why do these open source models matter? They're cost effective, they're highly performant, they can run much more efficiently on a scarce GPU footprint, and they can be self-hosted on-premise or in cloud infrastructure. And so that brings up the another area where open source is particularly effective on the AI stack. And that is in the infrastructure required to build and serve these models. This is what a typical compute software, the, the software stack for AI compute looks like where in order to train and deploy models, you use transformer tools like PyTorch, uh, you deploy them using things like VLLM and DeepSpeed, which increase efficiency radically. You uh, use a distributed compute engine like Ray and an orchestrator like Kubernetes on a compute substrate that's built on GPUs and uh, cloud provider infrastructure, also based on uh, Linux clusters. All of this is uh, a part of a stack that's designed in open source and is constantly refined by an extremely large community to again, squeeze the most performance per kilowatt, uh, per token per kilowatt uh, out of those uh, precious GPUs out there. Open source in fact is incredibly good at squeezing out more tokens per dollar. Examples are things like VLLM, which provide a two to 400% increase in throughput by reorganizing key cache value and batching jobs in the server. Deep speed improves GPU efficiency. This is an open source uh, software project that increases efficiency by four to 600%. Open source has traditionally always been good at making the most out of hardware, even historic examples like in Linux, the tickless kernel, where uh, tools were created to make mobile devices more efficient. And that efficiency made its way into the same Linux platform in data center infrastructure, significantly reducing the cost of power and cooling. And so, what we're seeing is that open source is playing a critical role in making the most out of this precious infrastructure that is being built out in a frenzy. But one question is, what's next for open source AI? Well, what's next is we're sort of built on three pillars. There's training, building the models, which we've already talked about. Inference, serving those models, which we've talked about as well. But what comes next is the age of agents, where agents are tasked with planning and multi-step processes and are measured based on the outcome of those agents as a helper to the individuals who are deploying them. What agents do is take training, which requires vast resources, inference, which means thinking longer, even more resources and tokens, and that it accelerates and parallelizes that so that each agent is using both inference and models to create outcomes and exponentially increases the demand for tokens in this infrastructure. And so agents really start to realize the value of artificial intelligence, but also simultaneously increase the burden uh, on the amount of infrastructure that is required to make those agents actually operate. 
And again, open source works at each of those pillars. I've already talked about training and inference, but at the agent layer, what we're seeing is a new variety of protocols and tooling emerging that will usher in this era of agents. Protocols like MCP and A2A, open source reference code and MCP servers that are being used to allow for the adoption of agents and the deployment in a way that can scale. What open source does at every layer, including the agent layer, is it commoditizes the cost by allowing many people to work on them collaboratively, collaboratively in order to make it more efficient in order to increase the amount of investment that can go into applications and tools created for agents, uh, which is where the real value is captured in the ecosystem. So open source has this unique ability to dance on the bubble. And although some think that folks are over-investing in AI infrastructure, I disagree. I think that the demand continues to grow, that the amount of all of these build-outs will continue to grow as the amount uh, of infrastructure required from model development to inference to agents continues to exponentially grow. And what open source will do is make sure that no matter what stage that infrastructure is deployed, for long periods of time, vast groups of technologists will collectively work on squeezing every single bit out of that precious infrastructure. Because as we all know, eventually it's software where the value in all of this is realized. And just like software ate the world, open source will eat AI too. Thank you very much.